Welcome to One Million Cent, the podcast where we equip you to share Jesus. Hey, One Million Cent, One Million Cent, get them trained in the crib, 100%. One Million Cent, One Million Cent, get them trained in the crib, like 100%. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ryan Fontenot here again with the One Million Cent Podcast. I am excited to have a good friend of mine that has been a friend for a pretty good while now, man. We've known each other, done events together, um, encouraged one another. Uh, I think probably sent other people to us instead of us. Like, hey, no, you need Jason. No, you need Ryan. Uh, but uh, he's a pastor now. He's a comedian. He's a uh, man. He, he does a marriage thing with his wife. I mean, just so much. You're going to be blessed by my good friend, Jason Earls. Man, how's it going today, my brother? Man, it's good. I'm glad to be on the one million set, baby. I'm glad to be one in a million. <laughs> one in a million. That's it. Hey, that's actually funny you say that. That's one of the shirts I want to design one time. It's like one in a million. So yeah. people to go through training they get it but yeah man you hit me up on that so let's go it's awesome man you doing doing good today though, man, man i'm good man we're I'm here good. we're here redefine coffee in grapevine texas man let me just say man you know i've done many a podcast yeah yeah but this is the best one in a okay. coffee shop. In a coffee, you shop. know, get like and, and cut for a minute. That, Let's go get some coffee. That's right. That's right, man. That's right. But you got your, is that your cappuccino? You got the, no, what'd you, no, what'd you so order, man? What'd you I'm, order? I'm a white chocolate mocha dude. Oh, but, uh, white chocolate mocha. I like this. I so, like so this. He, yeah. So his like ways was funny. So most of my friends, yeah, that look like me, yeah, order white chocolate mocha. Okay. Okay. Most of my friends that look like you. <laughs> order black coffee. <laughs> and then, and then, <laughs> is there something to that? You Dude, know, is and there... then a lot of my Hispanic friends, you know what kind of they like? What? Americano. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I'm not lying. Check it, check y'all. Listen, I want y'all. I this, feel like this is one of your your lines. Here, Dude, I don't even I don't I, even know how to put this on stage. It's, I, I, it's one of it's these real one. life. It's a good one. Experiences, man. I, 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 I what kind of coffee you drink? <laughs> Dark, dark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, most of my white friends yeah, yeah, yeah. drink that coffee yeah. black. That's right. Yes, yes. That's and my right. wife and I, we, my, both my wife and I, who's black, by the way, she, uh, dude, I would go to his white chocolate mocha. That's and awesome. our Hispanic friends that uh, we love, Americano. they love an Americano, man. <laughs> this, this is the best opening we've ever had on the podcast. So. And insights. Hey, if you don't get anything else out of this That's podcast, it, you have one already. So, oh my gosh. Just, don't, I, just don't order for somebody. Don't look right. at your... Black yeah, for like a, white chocolate mocha. That's right, that's right. You want a white chocolate mocha? Yeah. Don't you? They're like, how'd you know? How'd yeah. you know? <laughs> that's awesome, man. Well, Jason, thanks for being here, brother. Thanks for having me. Hey, to me, get man. us kicked off, man, why don't you share a little bit about, man, just uh, where you're at now? I know you're pastoring a church, North Garland yeah. Church. Uh, but but what what do you do, man? And then, but how did you get here? Give us that give us that flyby, man. Bro, how did you get to where you are? It's uh, and I'll try to make this as quick as possible. All right, but dude, it's. I, I, if I could sum it up, man, like God's got a, a plan for all of us. Yeah, that sounds that sounds like cheesy, corny, no. uh, Christian. But <laughs> but man, like, so I started doing stand up comedy when I came to Dallas to go to seminary. Okay. Actually, a little bit before. All right. And uh, man, I fell in love with this this idea of making people laugh. It's kind of what I've always mm. done. If I go back and do a life map, yeah. I can, well, when I went back and did a life map, I can see how comedy has always been an element. Of who Jason Earls is, okay. Yeah. In addition to just this aspect of joy, yeah, or healing the the hurt. There you go. Those who are hurting, and then, but in high school, I went to my dad. Told my dad, "Hey, instead of going to college, I'm going to the improv to be a comedian." And my dad was like, "Huh, boy, you funny." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you funny, all right. <laughs> so I do. So I gave up that dream. I was like, "Well, I guess." I'm going to college. I choose life over <laughs> comedy. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, man, I, so I went to college, went to Virginia State University. Okay. Graduated. I met my wife there. Uh, then came to Dallas, go to Dallas Theological Seminary. Okay. And um, it was in a class there, uh, in the Bible study methods class. The project was, the assignment was Acts 3, the gate called Beautiful. And you had to creatively present that passage. You couldn't <laughs> preach. You couldn't write an essay. You just had to creatively present it. You're like, you're like, let's and go. And I was like, let's. I created a, a, a little comedy dialogue, monologue. Really? It was like, 
you know, because back at home in Virginia, we associate beggars with either crackheads or winos. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so I was like, okay, and this passes creatively. I'm going to put a wino spin on the dude who was paralyzed. <laughs> In a theolo- theology class. Right. I love so, that. So okay. then I'm okay. like, okay. you know, so I just thought like, come on, Peter, come on. Yeah. You yeah. know, come on, John. Come on, give us give it, give it some change, man. You got some spare change. Come on. That's D- pretty good. That's pretty good. Or Dude, else I, got- I haven't heard this one. Let me hear it. Dude, don't, 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 call, you know, don't deny me three times, Peter. Come on, please. <laughs> and then, and it calls Silver Gold, Have I Not the Name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Arise and Walk. And then I just started, I went from this drunk man to just, Jumping around, running around the classroom, mm. and I was like, if people wonder what had happened to him, mm. but the question for us is, when people see our lives, do they ask what has happened to us, bro? Drop the mic. Then I just this walked off, <laughs> and everybody stood up. Yes. And Howard yes. Hendricks said, "Ladies and gentlemen, that is what I'm talking about right there." <laughs> and it was at that moment I was like, "I need to be doing this." There you you can't. You feel, did you feel alive? I mean, you feel like, dude, not like, just alive, but this, this internal affirmation. Yeah, yeah. Like nobody's business. It's yeah. this passion meets purpose Come meets. On. Man, man, this is what I gotta be doing. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that, so I started going on the road. Now, now, you, what most people don't know. Well, don't know that my dad at this time is a pastor. Okay. My granddad is a pastor. Okay. My other granddad who who had passed on at this point, he was dead. And I come from a lot of okay. a preach a preacher family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for them to see now this third generation, dude, going to seminary, did something that most people went to seminary back near home. Yeah. I went to Dallas and man. To see that I'm focused on comedy now. Like, what did they do to him? Dude, it it presented a problem wow. with the Pharisees. Uh. And, <laughs> and I say that, you know, because we yeah, all, they, they're yeah. super supportive now. Yeah, yeah. But it was just, who knows comedy? Like, right. and then in the 90s, yeah. there wasn't a big thing called Christian comedy. Yeah, yeah. And so my family's association with comedy were the Richard Pryor's. Eddie the Murphy. Eddie Murphys, you know, and they're like, dude, this is you giving up ministry or you saying that you adding on to your ministry? That seems like a distraction to me. Mm-hmm. Mm. And so anyway, so the, I started this track, man, of really I didn't want to be the church funny dude. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. all got those. You got yeah. that one dude, that old yeah. deacon back in yeah. the day yeah. who would print off jokes on the internet yeah. and get up and read them. That's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. Or somebody who yeah. tells what we call stock jokes. It's yes, like, you know, right. those jokes that you can just pick them up and anybody can tell them. I wanted to be great at it. Yeah. And so I started studying comedy. I even started going to the comedy clubs. Yeah. And just trying to, you know, just chopping my teeth at this thing called comedy and became, I would say, Fairly decent, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I would say so. <laughs> yeah, and I, you know, it's 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 how I've taken care of my wife and my six kids. Yeah. My wife, up until last year, uh, stopped working when she was pregnant with our first child. Yeah, yeah. So for twenty three years, she hadn't had a job, and I've been taking care of the family primarily through doing stand up comedy and other yeah. things. But yeah, yeah, man. So it's you know the Lord's had His hand on it, and. Um, and then, well, probably like two years ago, mm-hmm. the Lord started presenting an opportunity for me to become a senior pastor. Okay. And I was like, no, nah, no, nah, this is, I would tell the people who were coming to me, like, no, nah, y'all tripping. No, nah, it's y'all a little old school. I'm going to do stand-up comedy. It's part of who I am. <laughs> but then, man, the Lord just really started. Just convicting the brother, the Holy Spirit had me in the oh my goodness. in the full the Nelson. Full Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> and Jesus go, yaka, yaka. <laughs> but it was it part of it was, man, I look back in my journal. So that was last year. I looked at, back in my journal in 2015. Mm-hmm. I was on this comedy tour called the Date Night Comedy Tour. We're going all over the country. And really, this philanthropist organization decided it was just a bunch of millionaire billionaires got together. Like, here's what we're gonna do with our money. Let's all get together. What's the one issue? Marriage. So they put a lot of money throughout the country to focus on, you know, 
biblical marriages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so part of that would they would they would do some research in a city, uh, do different marketing things about marriage, and then they would promote this comedy tour. Yeah, and we yeah. would come into a city, and the people who organized the tour were like, "Hey, you a pastor? Clearly, on the comedy tour, we want to call you the pastor of the tour." And I was like, "Don't do that." Don't do that. Because it's something about... That being title. A, <laughs> yeah. yeah. When people say you're a pastor, and they say you're a comedian, like, oh, you can't be funny. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And so <laughs> I, I didn't want that. And I was getting frustrated with people calling me pastor. Like, yo, don't mm -hmm. call me pastor. <laughs> but one day, I was at the beach, and I was I was molding the sand in my hand. And I was like, this is cool. It was it was Juno Beach. Juno Beach in, uh, in West Palm. Okay. And I was like, man, this is pretty cool. And the Lord's like, turn to Isaiah. And I mm. turned to Isaiah, and it was like, show, show the clay say to the potter. Oh, man. What are you doing? Why mm. are you making me like this? Mm. And dude, Ryan, I broke down crying at the beach. Oh, man. Because it was as if, and like people see that God had this pastoral gift or trappings in me the way that I love on people. Yeah. And I was all any at any mention of it, I would get frustrated. Yeah, yeah. And then man, when the Lord the Lord set me up big time with that saying as I was molding it. And when I turned to that passage, it's like one to woe to the one who calls with his maker saying, What are you doing with me? Wow. Wow. And bro, that was like, okay. But then I I was like, ah, yeah, maybe it just looks like this. And then what the Lord started showing was I have an issue with the word pastor because of what I've seen. Come on. It's dad looks like this. Granddad looks like this. And I don't. All this, yeah. All right. And I, I don't want to look like That's that. Right. There's yeah. no way I'm I'm funny. I really I recognize right. I'm funny since I was in right. first, yeah. second grade. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. When I would make it's the mean cafeteria. got you in trouble. Right. Well, <laughs> no, dude, really. I would make that mean cafeteria lady there smile. Go. There you go. That's it, man. That, and that's, it. That, that's the stuff I I'm talking it. about in my, yeah. in, like when I look so back. So good. Early elementary, bro. Yeah, I was making. I was helping the class clown. You settle. saw it break down walls, bro. Yeah, yeah. And elementary, so you gonna tell me I can't do this? Right. That's like, yo, that's get that guy, you wired me. me like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, yeah. so now I'm like, okay, that can't be pastoring in a traditional yeah, sense. Yeah. And he do I necessarily. This sounds weird because I'm a pastor now, but I don't want that stuff. I don't right. want the everyday administrative. I got to go to yeah. your house because you're having some family issues. Mm -hmm. Dude, that's all the stuff I didn't want. Yeah. Yep. And here I am. But the Lord's like, you You keep doing comedy, but you're going to do this yeah. for however the season long lasts. Yeah. 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 That's awesome, man. So you're doing comedy. You're your senior pastor now. Yeah. You do some marriage ministry with your wife. I do. Uh, you got a little bit going on. I like this. I yeah. like this, man. <laughs> so, you know, I think, you know, it, we're kind of... In, in all of these episodes, man, it's just been a conversation about how God is leveraging you where you are for the kingdom. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of people think, well, I'm not a senior pastor, so God can't use me. Or I'm not on staff at a church, so God can't use me. How have you seen God use comedy uh, in your life? Because that's not normal. I say not normal. It's not traditional. No, not most people think I'm going to leverage that yeah. for the kingdom. And there's a lot of people who have gifts from God. Right talents from God that are to be leveraged for God, but they they don't realize that. Yeah. So how have you seen that switch? Like, I'm gonna why not just go do comedy? Why leverage it and how have you leveraged it for the kingdom? Well I say first of all, you gotta understand this. God didn't give everybody everything, but he gave everybody something. There you go. They say say that that you gotta lean into that one, man. God, yeah. didn't, God didn't give everybody everything, but he gave everybody something. That's good. And he wants you to use that something to make his name great. There you go. The question is, what is that something? Dude, mm. I really believe, uh, just as sure as my name is Jason, mm. is that every single person on the face of this earth who calls on the name of, of Jesus mm -hmm. has been given something mm. yeah. to make God's name great, unlike anybody else. Yeah, that's good, man. And that's so good. it's for me, it's this combination of stand-up co or making people laugh, rather, mm -hmm. and... And this passion for God's word. and running, that That's what it is for me. For one person, it might be the ability to brew coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, for another person, it might be the, a, a person's ability to organize. Yeah. 
And, and man, I really, I, I like going to a person's childhood. That's why you hear me refer to my childhood mm -hmm. because that's when it shows up in its raw sense. That's good. Yeah. I didn't know good. it was stand up comedy in second grade. Yeah. But I knew that that mean cafeteria lady didn't have to be that mean. Yeah, that's right. I knew that dude that always got in trouble didn't have to keep getting in trouble. Yeah. Like, dude, you don't got to get so mad. <laughs> and so what, is, what are those things that God naturally gave you that you just love doing? Yeah. And what and it would almost do for free. Right. Yeah, man. You and, you, and you do it without thinking almost. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. And then and then when you hand that into the hands of God, man, he now, now he's absolutely Holy Spirit fire on it. Yeah. It's a different deal. I love what first first Peter says, man, if anyone speaks, let him speak as the or of oracle of God. Mm. If anyone serve, let him serve as with the strength that God provides. Supplies and it's like so. All of us have this area where we should be serving mm -hmm. with the with the uncommon strength. Yeah, yeah, that's good. and so yeah. So for one person, it's the ability to clean up. For another person, it's baking cookies. Yeah, there you go. You know, it's yeah. but you also need the body around the body of Christ around where they can say, okay, you bake cookies good, right. Let's put some administrative processes mm -hmm. around your baking cookies. That's right, man. Yeah. So yeah. that you can bake more cookies mm -hmm. and the cookies have a further reach. Yeah. That's good, man. Yeah. And I think also in the body, see, talking about the local church and everything like that, which, you know, in our day and time, probably every time, you know, the local church gets its rap, you know, a bad rap. Yeah. But the truth is, you know, the reason that I, I never saw the gifting in me of preaching or evangelism or leadership or anything like that. But somebody in the church called it out in me. Yeah. And I think in the church sometimes, in the body of believers, we are in there. We, we're around to the believers. Like, like, let's go back to the cookie example. Yeah. If a lady says, hey, I think God's called me to bake cookies, they're like, no, nah, girl, your cookies are sorry. <laughs> like, we, we don't, every time you bring them, we right. If they got eggshells in that's them. Right, that's, <laughs> that's probably not. But old Susie over here, she's right. killing it on the cookies. Absolutely. Yeah. But, uh, but, but it's in that, it's in the body that, you're able to call people up and see these things, see things in them. Case in point, let me talk about my friends, Josh and Am Amber Logan. Okay. Josh and Amber Logan. Josh is a dude, one of my close friends, who was calling this pastor thing out in me. But, mm -hmm. And I was like, dude, he go to our church. And I'm like, dude, shut up. Like, dude, that could, one, first of all, you saying I should be a pastor. I know we're like really close brothers, but that's not that's not healthy, I don't think. <laughs> and when when you're in a church and there's a senior pastor, yeah, you know, yeah, shout out to my dude yeah. Tony Matthews. Oh, I'm like, love Dr. yeah, Matthews. I'm like, yo, don't you? We got a pastor. Don't say yeah. I should be a pastor. Yeah. And he was like, dude, I ain't saying you should be like take over here. I'm just saying I'm seeing this in you. Come on. His wife, when when our families would hang out, dude, his wife had she she was very orderly, which her and my wife get along because my wife is super orderly. And uh, what Amber would do. As organized as she was, she didn't care about her silverware drawer. Hmm. When she would take the silverware out the out the uh, dishwasher, she would she would just dump them in the in the uh, in one drawer in one drawer all together. And she said this: "She was like, oh, why waste my time in organizing that?" Huh. And when she said that, I was like, "Yo, you are an administrative genius." And all three, you know, my wife, Amber, we call her Amy, mm -hmm. and, and my, my brother Josh, mm -hmm. they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, do y'all not see that you like things to be in order so much that you even going to organize your mind mm -hmm. to say this is something that's not worth the salt. Come on, man. And being bothered with. I'm like, yo, <laughs> you, you would get this. So you know what I did when I became pastor, like a few months ago. I can tell you what you did. You better have done. Go ahead, tell us. Well, I made her. I made her the the event coordinator for the church. Yes, you did. Yes, you. You hired her. <laughs> yeah. I'm oh, like, yo, you, you got. That's it. Well, she served in this volunteer role, but that's, hey, that's but it. it's but she has a staff level position. Absolutely, man. That's yeah. it. That's it. And and that happened because of doing life together. Uh, Absolutely. Being around other believers. And so those of you that are watching, you know, it's real easy, I think, for us to get sermons on online, to get information online. Hey, one thing you can't get online is community. I know yeah. I, all the social media. Hey, there's a reason Gen Z is the most connected digitally of any generation we've ever known, but they're the most lonely generation mm. we've ever known. Digital connection.
connection is good, but it cannot take the place of in-person community. Absolutely. And we realize there are people who can't gather in person. We get that, all right? Yeah. Get you an Oculus. <laughs> Go to the metaverse. Got to make it a little bit better. Not the same. But. <laughs> he just dropped the metaverse Oculus. <laughs> Another first on the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. So, But I love that, Matt. I think it's just this beautiful beautiful thing of of, of connection, of community. And, and you know, it, I'm just going to reaffirm what Go you ahead. know. It's the pastoral heart in you. Hmm. You're like, there's something about community you don't get anywhere else, man. <laughs> Why you got to go there? I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Keep hey, going. No, no. But I'm yeah. using that to say, show yeah. the people how it shows up. It does, yeah. And if you're frustrated when people affirm what God's placed inside you, that's a problem. That's right. That's right. And right. I didn't recognize that's that. That's right. Read Isaiah. <laughs> <laughs> Just go and Google the potter says to the clay. Yeah. Watch what happens. It, yeah. Anytime. Like the the Lord uses the body of Christ mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to automatically do things yeah, yeah. that He wants it to do. There's yeah. a verse for that. First First Corinthians twelve Come seven. On, that's right, man. Yeah. Says the the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good of everyone. Everyone. Yeah. So the Lord is doing something. I don't like that word manifestation because mm. people have taken that. You know, it's one of those words Just that make you it. seem deep. Use it. You make bro. an ugly face like manifestation. Like, mm, come on. It depends on how you yeah. say it. Right? <laughs> manifest. Manifest. If you enunciate the whole yeah. thing, everybody's like, "What wow. just happened?" Manifestation <laughs> of the cereal and the milk. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best <laughs> moment of Rice Krispies I've ever had. Come on. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, by the way, if you're just listening to this podcast, you want to go watch the video. Jason has the best facial expressions of any human on the planet. So. Oh, that's funny. Oh, man. Well, so I know we've done some events together, comedy, everything like that. Man, I've, I've, I've been a beneficiary of being in the room with you when um, your comedy breaks down walls. Mm. Um, can you give us an example of how that happens? Because I think that's one of the best things, laughing. You know, It heals for sure. Yeah. But one of the things I've seen it do is it just you know you can have a teenager or an adult walk in and they got the scowl on their yeah. face they don't want to be there they're just mad they're in the right. room and next thing you know they're laughing and next thing you know they're open to the gospel how have you seen God use that well I'll, I'll go back to the first time I, I ever did anything publicly mm -hmm. that had the comedy around it yeah yeah that was back in college at Virginia State University, and I ran for Mr. Virginia State University, Mr. Trojan. Bro, you went, bro. Let's bro, go. Let's go. I had no idea. And I always said, if I ever did one of those man pageants, yes, I for my pageant. for my talent, I would do some comedy. Yeah, just I would always say that you in high said, school. Yeah. So what so? I did, I just I did this character. And it, it, dude, it murdered, meaning it was good. There you go. Hey, yes, thank you for explaining. <laughs> right, right. I had to interpret the tongue. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and, dude, I, uh, the next day, okay, by the way, I lost. But anyway. <laughs> but not because of the comedy. Not because of comedy, there dude. The comedy, I, dude, it ripped. The place was on, dude, yeah. it exploded. That's awesome. And a dude called, I played a character called Jerome from Martin. And a dude next day, one of these very brass dudes from New York, he was like, yo, Jerome. And I was like, what's up, man? He was like, man, listen, bro. Last night I was mad. I ain't feel like being nowhere. But when you got on stage, I was laughing, and I forgot that I wanted to be mad. Come on, man. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, so so yeah. that so that was in the that did that didn't lead to the gospel. No, but yeah, but it. it, it but you saw the power of comedy. I, I, exactly. Yeah, and I was like, dude, that's what's all about. So fast forward as I started doing it. Yeah, what's been happening typically with the marriage stuff? You got a dude or 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 a female who's having marriage issues. Come on, and just going to church or to this event to appease their spouse. And then I come out on stage, and you see it. You see it. You see the. You know. Oh man. You see the shoulders up. Mm -hmm. You see the arms folded, and slowly you see the. You know. You see the arms. <laughs> so, <laughs> the shoulders. So shaking. Yeah, shake a little bit. <laughs> and then you see this relaxing. And then when I, in particular, there's always an end for me. Like, yeah. jokes are not the end; they're a means to the end. Come on, man. And so, I know it's funny, man. Sometimes I feel bad, like, oh. 
you getting set up so bad. Because <laughs> now you didn't want to come to church. You come yeah. to church. Now you're saying like, oh, I relate to this. Right. Not only do I relate to it, I'm enjoying it. Not only am I enjoying it, but what he just said resonates with me. Yeah. I feel like that dude is like me on stage. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And now all those things are gone. And now I can say in marriage, somebody's got to be like Jesus. Come the on. question is, where where are you being like Jesus? Mm. You know, because like on, on, I got this big marriage joke that I do. And mm. in the end, I, I talk about how I'm having this issue with my wife. Yeah. And uh, and then this this old man cuts me off in the gro- in this grocery store, no signal light or nothing, and he just looked at me and says, mm-hmm. "I said, excuse me, sir." He was like, "Sure." When this dude did this, this happened in real life. When he did that, I wasn't mad anymore, and I was like, "What the heck just happened?" I know a soft answer turns away wrath, but that was ridiculous. That was a Jedi. The dude, the dude literally <laughs> said, "Sure." One, one word. <laughs> right, just sure. And I dude, it, it dude, it disarmed me. And then the Lord was like, maybe you need to take Shaw into your marriage. Mm. And I shared this on stage. And then I say, you know, might as well start with me since I'm the man. Somebody in the marriage got to be like Jesus and crawl up on the cross and die, Mm. even when they didn't do nothing wrong. Come on. (laughs) (laughs) And so, you know, marriage people like that. They're like, yeah, I'll never do nothing wrong. Why I got to be the one who dies? (laughs) Because that's what Jesus did. Yeah, man. And that's how Jesus loved us. He died for us. When when we were the ones ones who did wrong and he didn't mm, in our place, yeah. And so you know, and part of it is serving one another. So, dude, I saw a dude. I did an event, a men's event. Fast forward two years later, I went to preach at their church, and he came to me and said, "Man, listen, you uh two years ago, you talked about being Jesus in your marriage." He said, "I never forget that." He said, "Man, in that day, I went home." And started looking at tangible ways to serve my wife. He said, so I've been making up my bed for ten, two years Come on. since I heard that. Man. And, it's, and it changed my marriage. And the wife was there. It was like, yeah. And it was part of Texas. Like, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. dude had two teeth in his mouth. <laughs> you know, and the mustache, co- co- you know, covered yeah, everything. Yeah. Like, yeah, this is yeah. my people. They my people. They're my people. Yeah, and I feel go. right at home. Right. This is like Paul's for Jay right here. Yes, and yeah. uh, but, you know, so it's instances like that. I, I mean, but it's, it's so many. There's so many times that people have come to me and giving me. I got three instances that are like jamming together in my mind. Yeah, yeah. One, and I'm very careful to say some of them because some of them didn't necessarily lead. To a person really confessing Jesus, yeah, yeah. but led to a place of peace. Come on, yeah. One lady came, well, one lady organized an event, had her friend to come. My wife and I are leaving out the next morning, and the lady called before we headed out of town. She's like, hey, I got to tell you, I invited my friend who has insomnia. She hadn't been able to sleep. And she said she came to the show last night, and last night she had the best night's sleep. Mm. That she had had in a while. Not during your show. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's, but it's funny because it's like, yo, like yeah. even something as simple as the peace some, yeah. that comes with sleep. Think you about know. that, man. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's... You know, Jesus met those physical needs before a lot of times he hit the spiritual absolutely. needs. Who knows what that led to down the road? Absolutely. Who knows? And so w- there was an instance at a, at a youth retreat where I did the comedy and I presented the gospel and at this probably like 300 kids, five kids came up to receive Christ and one adult who was a chaperone. And then I mean, man, a slew of kids came back saying, hey, man, I need to get some stuff right. I've been saying right. I confess Jesus, but yeah. I really haven't been living yeah, like yeah. it. And man, like listening to this adult the next day talk about how his life was truly transformed. Uh and, and I feel like I'm being a little shallow with part of this testimony. It's because he said he had been trying to quit cigarettes, smoking cigarettes for 20 years. And after he came down at night and accepted Christ, out of routine, he went out out the cabin mm-hmm. to smoke a cigarette. He said, I, I couldn't smoke anymore. Mm. Wow. wow. So him receiving Christ... Yeah. Had instantly transformed <laughs> even some of his his habits that he yeah. had, and I, I've watched man you take 
you know, openings. And, you know, I, I don't know if you know this, but when I first started traveling and, and speaking at a couple guys that travel with me, they're buddies and, and they, they dubbed me the not so funny speaker guy. Literally yeah. they're, they're, they're like, Ryan, you're not funny. I'm like, I'm cause I was I'm prophetic. I'm more direct. And Dude. They, they're, they're like, yeah. And so, so to, yeah, I, would, I remember watching, I'm like, man, I just wish I was, I was funny. You know, <laughs> I, I, I'm funny in my own way, but but man, just to think of like, but I watched that breakdown walls and I'm I've seen it at work. And I think that's true for all of our gifts, right? Yeah. God uses all of our gifts to break down walls and to to point people to him. Absolutely. And, and but but let me just say, dude, Ryan Fontenot is one of the <laughs> the greatest speakers. I'm not yeah, just saying yeah. I'm not used that dude. Yeah. Like your ability to exegete the text and to preach with passion yeah, yeah, and come from this place of, man, here's what the Lord is saying directly to me that yeah. ain't nobody know about. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, how yeah, is this yeah, dude yeah. up in my mail oh, right man. now? Yeah. And just seeing that oh. time after time yeah. makes you that, like, dude, you don't need, like, funny yeah. would mess yeah, that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I appreciate yeah, that, man. Funny, funny would jack all that yeah. up. Yeah. 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 Keep reading Speak the minute. We got the pause. Oh, yeah. there we go. All right. Somebody want to get in yeah. on my podcast right there. Right. <laughs> no, so, I, I appreciate yeah. that, man. But, I, go ahead. Yeah. But I just, man, with, again, it's our our talents and our abilities is what God flows. It, yeah. Is, is, is the tunnel yeah. in which he flows his, his gifts and his spirit through. I love it. And yeah. so my, my, one of my tunnels will happen to be stand-up comedy. Yeah. But in stand-up comedy, what you're going to get when I'm doing comedy, or if it's a video, in some aspect, you're going to get inspired. Yep. You're going to be encouraged. You're going to be challenged. Yep. You know, you're going at some point, you're going to hear the gospel. It's yeah. going to be, at some point, you're going to come face to face with the reality of who Jesus is. Love it, yeah, and that's it, man. Yeah. I love uh, Earl's is like jab, 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 dab. Then all of a sudden, right hook, pow! You're like, I did not see that coming, man. <laughs> so, uh, hey, well, uh, man, people that are listening, uh, they want to have you in to, to preach. They want to have you in to do comedy. They want to have some marriage thing. What's the best way for people to connect with you to yeah. make that that connection? All things Jason Earls. JasonEarls dot com yeah, is yeah. the uh, is you know you remember people you used to always say www.jasonearls.com <laughs> You're like, like yo stop. W- we w- everybody w- knows <laughs> that it's on the internet we say dot com you know <laughs> and people not even gonna go to your website now like that's yo right. just just that's say the gram that's right, right. 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 so oh. it's at Jason Earls it's at Jason Earls I love it man <laughs> and uh, we'll drop all that stuff in the show notes yeah. man it's always a blast to hang out thank you for Likewise, taking a little bit man. of time to just pour in to yeah. our, our listeners man and I, I, I just know listen if you are listening I promise you're a pastor, you're a leader, um, man, you, you're over some area of ministry or you run a camp, whatever. Like if you haven't taken time to consider like a comedian or somebody with Jason Earl's giftings, uh, I'm telling you, reach out, go go listen to his stuff online. It's amazing. And uh, every time we've worked together, man, it's been a blessing. So Jason, thank uh, you, man, so thank much, you, bro. Appreciate thank you for it. your ministry. Pastor Earls. I, still, I, do, I, I, do, I still have a problem with that word, dude. I really do. I don't know. Y'all pray for me. Every time, I, 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 like, I don't oh, say man, that. No, well, you know, I pastored for yeah. like eight years and now I travel and somebody's like, oh, pastor. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not a pastor. I'm yeah. an evangelist, right? But evangelist, Ryan, sounds really weird. <laughs> that sounds like you got a white suit on. And you're like, yeah, hey, that's, yeah. right, that's right, man. That's right. Well, listen, guys, those of y'all listening, thank you for tuning in. Hey, I want to give a big shout out one more time to our friends here at Redefine Coffee, Kenyon, Katie Coleman, if you're in Grapevine, Texas, come by, drop in. You won't regret it. A great cup of coffee, incredible atmosphere. Did you it's hear delicious. that? It even it sounds is absolutely good. delicious. <laughs> this is why you've got to get Jason Earls <laughs> in your in your house. Hey right, man, I love you guys. And listen, no matter where you are today, no matter what cup of coffee you're sipping on, just know this: today's a great day to tell somebody about Jesus. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> One million cent, one million cent Get on train in the queer, 100% One million cent, one million cent Get on train in the queer, like 100%